what is this colossal statue of Emperor Constantine doing here in Rome? This is a reconstruction of the original Colossus of Emperor Constantine, and you can visit it for free here in Rome, and I'm going to tell you how. I'll also tell you how you can visit the original ancient fragments from what was once the colossal statue of Constantine here in the Capitoline Museums just next to me. Stay tuned because at the end of this video I'm going to reveal a piece of an enormous colossal statue from ancient Rome hiding in plain sight at the Vatican that nobody knows about. First of all, how did I get here? The statue is inside of the Caffarelli Courtyard of the Capitoline Museums here on the Capitoline Hill in Rome. It's completely free to visit, so you can easily include this statue when you're visiting ancient Rome or perhaps visiting the Capitoline Museums if you can find the time. To get here, climb the ramp to Campidoglio. As soon as you get to the top of the ramp, take a right and walk under the arch. Walk around the back and you'll see a gate on the left-hand side. As a bonus, there is a free bathroom in this courtyard. This feels like something of a secret entrance, but it is an actual entrance to the cafe of the Capitoline Museums. In fact, it is one of my secret entrances because you can visit the cafe and the bathrooms without going inside the museum. So this is a great bathroom stop when you're out and about in this area of Rome. Here's the entrance to the cafe and the bathroom. The bathroom is at the top of the first set of stairs and the cafe is at the top of the second set of stairs. This statue was unveiled here in early 2024 and not that many people seem to know about it yet. So I have yet to see it crowded. This is a full-scale replica of what was once a colossal statue of Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. It measures 13 meters, about 39 feet high, and is made of resin and polyurethane. In just a bit, we'll get into how the statue was replicated, but first, who was Constantine? Constantine the Great was a Roman emperor who ruled from 306 to 337 CE. In the year 312, he defeated his co-emperor Maxentius at the Milvian Bridge. In doing so, Constantine gained complete control over the western part of the empire, including Rome. One of the things that Constantine is most famous for is that in the year 313, he made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. Another thing Constantine is famous for is that in the year 326, he moved the capital of the Roman Empire from Rome to Constantinople, which is today Istanbul. This was part of the beginning of the expansion of the Eastern Roman Empire in Byzantium, which in turn was a factor in the decline of the Western Roman Empire. There are several theories about the origins of the original colossal statue of Emperor Constantine. It may have started out as a statue to Jupiter Optimus Maximus, king of the universe, who was the chief deity in ancient Rome. That statue to Jupiter would have stood in the temple by the same name that stood high on the Capitoline Hill. It was the most important temple in ancient Roman times. Some remains of the temple are still visible today, and you can visit them inside of the Capitoline Museums. That statue of Jupiter was itself a copy of a Greek original of Zeus by the famed sculptor Phidias, which was made in the 5th century BCE. There's an excellent replica of the statue of Jupiter, which dates from the Flavian period, in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. The statue of Jupiter was an acrolith, meaning that only the exposed body parts were made of marble, which was expensive. For the unexposed body parts, they could use less expensive materials, such as wood, brick, scraps, or a combination of these. The parts of the body of the sculpture that were meant to remain unexposed were then covered over with paint or stucco, which would look like something draping the body. The word acrolithic comes from ancient Greek and means stone extremities. This was common in antiquity, and it's one of the reasons why we find heads and arms and other limbs of statues, but usually not torsos or other middle body parts. There are other theories of the statue. Some say that it began as a statue to Maxentius. When Constantine vanquished Maxentius, he may have taken over the statue and turned it into a statue of himself. This giant statue of Constantine is also an acrolith. We can't be sure exactly what it looked like, but we have a pretty good idea, and I'm gonna explain why. This colossal statue of Constantine is made up of copies of the original fragments that were found inside of the Basilica of Maxentius. When these fragments were discovered in the year 1486, they were moved to the Palazzo dei Conservatori on Capitoline Hill. Several years later, when Michelangelo was working in the area, he arranged the pieces inside the courtyard. 
It was not yet open to the public, but it is today, and we can see these fragments by visiting the museums. Drawings and prints made since the first half of the 16th century demonstrate how, over the centuries, the arrangement of the fragments has changed. At first, nobody knew what these fragments depicted. At one point, people thought that it might have come from the enormous statue of Nero, which once stood next to the Colosseum. But that wouldn't have made any sense, since Nero's statue was made of bronze. It was not until the late 19th century that these fragments were correctly identified as Emperor Constantine. The fragments, which are made of Parian and Carrara marble, include the head, the neck, the right leg from the knee to the foot, the left leg below the knee, and the left foot, part of the right arm, and two versions of the right hand. More on that in a moment. The statue was bare-chested, probably draped, and probably seated on a pedestal, which would have been inside of an excedra. Marble was used to portray the exposed flesh while the mantle might have been bronze. The current reconstruction shows an imagined bronze drape, although we just don't know for sure. And while this depiction of him is just a conjecture, it's pretty close to reality. First of all, the pose of the emperor sitting with one foot out and one foot in was typical of the time. We can see this with other similar statues, such as that of Claudius in the Arapaches and of Augustus depicted as Zeus. Second of all, we can see from the original fragments themselves how this statue would have been arranged. The raised heel of the left foot confirms that the statue was seated. In 1951, an additional fragment was found. The fragment is of an exposed part of the chest, and the fascinating thing about it is that it has an exposed nipple, which tells us that the statue was mostly bare-chested with some draping. Have you noticed that the style of Constantine's face is pretty unusual? If we look at other heads of statues from ancient Greece and Rome, we can see that they are much more lifelike. So many ancient statues of Roman emperors were a combination of idealism and realism, which let the Roman citizens and us know who they were. When we see statues or busts of these emperors, we can easily recognize Augustus, Hadrian, Nero, Titus. I find it interesting that while the head is a bit abstract, some of the body part fragments are a bit more lifelike. For example, in the original fragment of the forearm, you can see sinew and veins. If you look closely at the head of the statue, specifically the chin, you'll see markings which indicate signs of a reworking. Many scholars believe that this is because the head once had a beard. This returns us to the theory that the original statue may have depicted Jupiter, since he was always shown with a full beard. You guys, look at how enormous this statue is. Can you imagine where it might have stood in ancient Rome? What kind of a building or space could have accommodated this statue? Let's take a good look at the Basilica of Maxentius. Emperor Maxentius began building his enormous basilica, the Basilica Nova, in 307 CE. It was one of the last of the giant monuments to be built in the ancient Roman Forum. However, as I mentioned, Maxentius was defeated and killed at the Milvian Bridge in the year 312. Constantine, who had vanquished Maxentius, became emperor and completed the basilica. He added an apse or excedra where this statue would have been placed. As I mentioned earlier, this is in fact the spot where the fragments were found in the year 1486. All right, let's talk about this reconstruction and how and why it came about. In late 2022 and early 2023, there was an exhibit in Milan called Recycling Beauty. The Factum Foundation worked with the Capitoli Museums and the Fondazione Prada, yes, the fashion house, on an ambitious project to recreate the colossal statue of Emperor Constantine based on the original fragments here in the Capitoline Museums. Each fragment was 3D modeled and then placed on a digital body they made that used statues in similar poses as examples, as I mentioned earlier. The result was a perfect facsimile of the original fragments. Most people don't realize it, but the right hand we see next to the head of Constantine does not belong to the original statue. The right hand of the statue is in the courtyard, but for some reason it's hidden away. Why are there two right hands and who does the other one belong to? And speaking of these hands, why do they show the index finger pointing upward when the reconstructed statue shows the finger wrapped around a scepter? Professor Diana Kleiner had a theory. Renowned ancient Roman scholar and Yale University professor of art history said, two different right hands have also been attributed to this statue, one with a plain Roman scepter and a second adorned with a Christian cross. The first hand and scepter might have been replaced by the second after Constantine's conversion to Christianity. 
we do know that the index fingers pointing upwards was a Renaissance reconstruction. A large hole in the right kneecap also indicates that the mantle of the statue was not made of real fabric, but instead bronze sheets, which would have been fastened to the statue at various points. In the right hand, he holds a scepter as a symbol of power, and in his left hand, a globe as a symbol of dominion. Both of these items were surely made of bronze and attached to the marble hands. As you can see, as I said earlier, these original fragments tell us a lot about what the original statue might have looked like. This reconstruction took almost the entire year of 2022, even though all the modeling work began many years earlier. There were plenty more colossal statues from ancient Rome. The first colossus we know about from the ancient world was of course the Colossus of Rhodes, which is where we get the word. Built in the third century BCE, it depicted the Greek sun god Helios. It stood over 33 meters high, making it the tallest statue in the ancient world. Three centuries later, Emperor Nero had a colossus made of himself. It was 120 feet high and stood next to his Domus Aurea. Eventually, after Nero's death, Vespasian changed the face of Nero into Helios, the sun god. Vespasian also wiped out Nero's lake and built a huge amphitheater over it called the Flavian Amphitheater. Its nickname, the Colosseum, is thought to come from the colossal statue of Nero that once stood nearby. Both the Colossus of Rhodes and Nero's colossal statue of himself are lost to us. But there are plenty other colossal statues from ancient Rome, some of which you can still see today if you know where to look for them. Take a look at this huge head sitting here in the pinecone courtyard of the Vatican Museums. Most people and tour groups breeze past it, but I think it is an amazing fragment. Most scholars agree that this head depicts the Emperor Augustus as Alexander the Great. We attribute the original head to Alexander the Great because of the hairstyle. This flowing hair was one of the best known physical attributes of Alexander the Great. But where did this huge statue come from? Where did it used to stand? Some scholars think that it might have been part of an acrolithic statue that once stood in the Hall of the Colossus in the Forum of Augustus. However, this is unlikely because that statue, while it was colossal, depicted Augustus as Pontifus Maximus, a genio or divine spirit. And when he was depicted this way, he was always veiled. If you visit the wonderful and uncrowded museum of Trajan's Market, you can see remnants of the colossal statue of the genius of Augustus, including, incredibly, an eye. But this leaves us to wonder where that giant head sitting in the pinecone courtyard of the Vatican Museums once stood. It's very likely that it did stand somewhere in the Forum of Augustus, just not in the Hall of the Colossus. So there were likely more than one colossal statues of Augustus. And now, as promised, a strange colossal remnant hiding in plain sight in the Vatican Museums. Sandro Barbagallo, curator of the historical collections of the Vatican Museums, pointed out this little gem to me. It's a giant finger that must have come from a giant statue, but nobody knows which one. Can you solve the mystery? For lots more videos about ancient Rome, check out my playlist right here.